uh, Herbert Levin, council member. Uh, I was on the policy planning staff during the Reagan period, and the first period was extremely uh, chaotic. The idea that he would say uh, he wants to get rid of all nukes and then triple the budget to develop more was because of some uh, deep sense of uh, how to go about it. I think it was wrong. It was simply chaotic. He did not read papers. We had to use the uh, CIA uh, discreet film studio and make things to, to talk to him. Uh, so he wasn't a reader. He wasn't informed. You had to find people he was willing to listen to because he surrounded himself with some very bizarre characters who didn't know anything about the world. So you found someone like Senator Lexalt of Nevada who had an open mind and you convince him that something had to be done with the president. The president trusted him because they used to go riding together and he would talk some sense uh, into him. So if I might ask for your question, uh, I, I, uh, I value uh, your perspective, yes. but what is the... The question is, do you think any president would be better off if he has a wife who consults her soothsayer and says which world leaders he should talk to on which date? Was that what was going on? Until Schultz got there and got some rationale into that chaotic White House. You want to address or do you want to pass? Well, I'll say okay. two quick things. First of all, I mean, I don't think that that element of Nancy Reagan really had any effect on uh, the administration. I do think that she's important in terms of her um, really wanting him to be remembered as a man of peace and not the kind of nuclear cowboy uh, that, that was in sort of certain newspapers or public mind. Um, secondly, in, in terms of, you know, how did you get him... How did you get an idea into Reagan's um, head? I, I, I do think that he, I mean, I go through these files, you know, that everything Reagan saw, and I, I do think he would read, he did read things. He obviously was much more um, attentive to, to visual stimulation. And to go back to the point about SDI and um, the kind of magic of it, I mean, the, the way that Edward Teller and others at Liver, yeah. Livermore yes, sir. Uh, would would convey uh, what what they're up to. I mean, it really was quite incredible uh, the level of technology they're describing. I don't know whether, you know, how much of it actually was working. But from his perspective, I mean, sitting down and reading, and then also seeing the sim, stim, uh, simulations of it, uh, it, it was not. It comported with his own. Um, Tremendous, unbounded optimism for sort of what what American society could could achieve technologically. Peter, you wanted to say. Uh, yeah, I think <laughs> without dealing with the particulars of what we heard from the floor, um, it, there was a widespread view. Um, it is still apparently true that there was this this view exists um, that Reagan really was very ignorant, and uh, there's really nothing you can uh, do to. Uh, uh, to argue about that, except if you read Karen Skinner's book called Reagan in His Own Hand, uh, which had, I don't know whether any of you had seen it, but I dealt with it a lot in my book that is somewhere around um, <laughs> here. Um, and, and that is Reagan had written before he became an active candidate, he wrote 670 um, radio scripts for himself because he was giving these radio addresses every week, 670 of these in his own hand. And this is what, uh, to people who were really looking at Reagan and trying to figure out what, what he knew and what he didn't know, it became a puzzle because these were very deeply researched pieces. They were short, of course. They were five-minute radio um, addresses. But they were very deeply researched, and they were written in his own hand which means that he didn't rely on a staff or anything like that to do them. Of that, 25% of them, 27% actually, were on foreign policy and military policy. And if you look at those, and I did for my book, um, you found that there was a, a, here was a person who knew a great deal about this subject. And what was interesting to me, in, and I reported it in the book, was the fact that there were so many things that he knew so much about when he was president, and he paid no attention to. That is to say, when these issues came up in meetings, cabinet meetings and so forth, he seemed completely uninterested in weighing in on these. And so what was it? Uh, incidentally, I should say, I was counsel to 
uh, Reagan actually during the Iran-Contra period. That's a different, different <laughs> story. Topic um, we can get into another time, yeah. and I'd love to talk about that. But, but uh, so I attended the cabinet meetings, and one of the really interesting things that you found is that the things that I knew uh, that Reagan knew something about, um, he ignored. Um, at least I knew afterward, because I saw Reagan in his own hand. I read the book, read the, read the pieces themselves. So why was it that he did not uh, weigh in on things that he had written about? And I came to the conclusion that he had a strategy. Uh, he wanted only four things. He wanted to accomplish four things in his presidency. One was to confront and change the Soviet Union, and the second was to get the get the U.S. economy moving through deregulation and tax cuts. A third was trade, which would force American companies to become more competitive. And the fourth was to restore the confidence of the American people. Those are the only four things he really paid any attention to. And everything else, he just let, left his administration to handle. Um, you could argue whether it was sensible to do that. But he felt that because he had made his policies and his principles so clear, his administration would run um, within those boundaries fairly smoothly. And in fact, it did. Other questions? 